Welcome to the New England Real Estate Journal 101. I'm Rick Kaplan, and we have a great guest lined up for you today. Before we get started, this is our first video interview, and we'd love to hear your feedback. You can find our contact information in the description below. You know, I know a lot of you are working from home, as well as I am, and, you know, it's been a little tough, but, you know, I think it's great. I can cook my macaroni and cheese. I'm making it from scratch. And I can talk to you as well as do this interview. So now on to our interview with Michael Chase of Northmark. Michael, thank you for joining us today. I know things have been very trying for the last uh, couple of weeks with this whole coronavirus. Uh, so I want to introduce you to our audience. It's Michael Chase from Northmark. He's the managing director. And Michael, how are you coping with everything? Rick, thank you for having me. Certainly interesting times and certainly some challenges going on, but uh, it's also an opportunity for us to show value to our clients and help them not only get their existing deals done, but really show how we can shine as a commercial mortgage banking firm that services the majority of the loans that we originate and can help, uh, help our clients through these times and working with lenders on even existing loans as well. Well, I know the feds have been cutting rates like crazy and mm -hmm. that's going to be, it's great for the clients. I'm sure it's, how is it affecting what you are doing? Sure. Well, I think the cutting of rates by the fed is only part of the story. Uh, in fact, over last weekend, um, when not this past weekend, the weekend before when the fed had made the announcement, of uh, they were cutting the overnight rate from, uh, by 100 basis points to zero to a quarter. Um, when borrowers started calling at that point, asking about where mortgage rates were, the truth was that was old news at that time. The, the Fed was reacting to economic conditions. And as we all know, mortgage rates have two parts to them. There is the index, which is, our, which are, which is low, but then there's the spread. And while the Fed cut the index rate, treasuries uh, spreads gapped out have gapped out considerably over the last two weeks um, the most common alternative investment for lenders that we look at is typically corporate bond yields and corporate bond yields blew out from being a spread of 150 in the area of about 150 basis points over treasuries to within the last 12 days going as as wide as 480 basis points over treasuries so even though uh, borrowers were out there hearing the headline news of the Fed cuts interest rates, when they went to their lender and asked for a pricing, they were actually hearing higher mortgage rates because those spreads had gapped out. Today, rates are probably uh, starting in the mid threes in, in, in the best of cases, uh, but most of the rates are probably gonna trade anywhere from three, three and three quarters to the low fours. Still historically very good rates, but the, uh, the opportunity to, to lock in long-term fixed rates below three, that window is probably shut for now. It was only open for a very short period of time a couple of weeks ago, and that opportunity has probably passed by. So at this point, it's, you still think it's a good time for investors as well as uh, people in the middle of projects to, for them to either refinance or have new financing put in place for a new project? I would say that today uh, the capital markets are a bit tighter. So uh, there is still some attractive rates out there, historically attractive rates, but for many deals, um, it's not the ideal time in the market to be going in and looking for a new mortgage today. Uh, the, we're still placing loans for clients and we're still getting, a, again, historically attractive rates. Uh, but borrowers may find a more friendly and accommodating market in the, in the coming weeks versus today. So what types of capital are people, uh, borrowers looking for right now with uh, sure. all of this going on? Great. Thanks for the question, Rick. Uh, for borrowers who are in need of financing, uh, for those closings that have a time sensitivity, to, time sensitivity to them, whether that be acquisition financing 
or a refinance where their loan is coming up for maturity, there are still lenders in the marketplace. Uh, banks are still actively lending, whether through the use of swaps or on book financing. They're just going to be a little bit more careful about you know looking at the current in place tenancy and if there's going to be any shocks to the income in the immediate future. Uh, there are still certain life companies out there who are lending. Uh, we also heard the news that the Fed has announced that they will be buying uh, the mortgage-backed securities being issued by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, which will be continue to provide liquidity to the multifamily space. Um, and then should things uh, deteriorate or need them, there are always lenders of last resort, such as the SBA and FHA, who are right now ready to step in again if needed. Now, the big question that everyone's always asking during times like this is the lenders relief on the existing loans they have out and what options may be available to them? Because we know that's coming. <laughs> sure. Um, I think what we've seen for the most part is before things really uh, got, war got, uh, got serious, most landlords were able to collect their March 1 rent checks. Uh, the, the primary concern at this point are the April 1 rent check. And then the question will be, will, will these issues extend into May or June? Uh, because of such a widespread and not only national, but in fact global issue, uh, regulators are stepping up and they're helping the lenders pro uh, provide flexibility uh, onto their clients. So, for example, if a lender were to uh, just go ahead and rewrite a loan or rewrite a mortgage, they could have the impact of having to post additional reserves against that against that loan. However, bank regulators have already given uh, banks authority to provide some short-term flexibility for clients, and many banks are, are looking to do that, particularly over the next 60 to 90 days, uh, whether that be move to interest only or move to some other level of forbearance. Um, in fact, I've been speaking to some small, uh, some small local banks. They're not staffed to handle all of these requests that may be coming at them on a one-by-one -one basis. So they may be just doing a, an overall global portfolio, uh, forgiveness to say, everybody in our portfolio, you now have 90 days of interest only, for example. Um, in a similar way, uh, the FH, um, uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac on the agency side, have recently uh, made announcements that their regulator has uh, announced for, uh, an available forbearance for those landlords, uh, so long as they make an agreement that they will not, uh, that they will suspend any convictions over the next 90 days. So uh, there will be some flexibility in the multifamily space, there'll be some flexibility in the banking space. Um, life companies are also working through how they're looking to be able to respond to these questions. Because there's certainly going to be many of them. Yeah, because uh, years ago I heard of banks uh, taking, and, and tough times, taking some of the, like a monthly mortgage and putting it, putting it onto the back end of the loan. Instead of uh, you paying it up front now, we'll, you know, at the end of the loan, we're at another three months. So something on that idea. I don't know if that's something that's being done again or if it can be done. Well, uh, again, yeah, exactly, Rick. So if you do any level of forbearance beyond, you know, moving to interest only, um, you would effectively be negatively amortizing your loan and you'd be increasing the balloon balance at maturity. So on the final notes, uh, well, for your final question, uh, what, what do you think is going to happen in the next couple of months? you think we're going to be moving forward and doing business? Or do you think we're, this is gonna last us uh, two, three months before we see a turnaround? That is the million dollar question, or maybe <laughs> trillion dollar question. Um, yeah, uh, the hope is of course, that this is a very brief restart. You know, uh, we shut everything down for a couple of weeks and get everything contained uh, and then we're able to restart the engine and move forward again. Um, if things get prolonged beyond that, then of course a, a lot of the accommodations that are going to be needed within the industry 
uh, from the very top down, from government to regulators to lenders to borrowers to tenants, the individuals, um, all of that is going to need a lot more work and thought uh, the longer these things happen. And then the question is, what, what will be the turning point? Will it be a scientific breakthrough um, where, you know, the coronavirus will, will uh, the issue will be relieved? Or is it a matter of just a more scientific research and a better understanding of what is out there? And it's become something that we just become willing to live with. Um, so any of, the, any of those possible scenarios, um, the question is how long will it take to get to that point? Sure. So only time will tell. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully we get through this in the next couple of months and move forward. Uh, you know, we, we're trying to do our best with everyone. You know, everyone's trying to work with each other. And I think that uh, we'll all get through it together. But uh, it's time, you know, we have to wait it out like everyone. Michael, exactly. thank you. Uh, I appreciate you coming on the one-on-one -on -one interview and I wish you the best and I hope you and your family stay safe. Likewise, Rick. I hope you and your family stay safe as well. Thank you for giving me the opportunity uh, to come on and, and speak with you. I think this is a great time to work with professionals uh, who can help guide you through and answer questions for you. Again, being a mortgage banker who services the loans that we originate, uh, not only are we helping our clients get new loans done, but we're also there helping our existing borrowers um, with any other requests that they have on their existing loan. Great. Thank you, Michael. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Rick. Look forward to the next time. Bye now.